It's 836. Interesting primary season we have here. Kind of see it uh, working out, too. And there's the establishment, and there are the anti-establishments. We have uh, you know, various candidates, a county commission you could probably put in one category or the other. We have it happening here in uh, Congress, too. In the congressional run, uh, Congressman Greg Walden in the 2nd District has a primary challenger, and he is the one, the guy we have in here right now, Dennis Linthicum, Dennis2014.com. Dennis, good to have you back. And what were you in town for? What's the story? You bet. Just like you were describing to the folks, uh, there was a Republican Central Committee last night here in Jackson County, and they I think they had 14 different candidates, including the sheriff and commissioners and senators and uh, myself included. So it was a great evening of uh, just getting up and meeting people and uh, having a chance to get a microphone and let people know who Dennis Lenthicum is. All right. So you are... Let's see, an economist, from what I understand, for uh, you have economic m- training? My degree is in economics, economics from UCLA. Right. And you are currently a Klamath County commissioner, That's which I correct. think probably limits you sometimes because you're probably having to work budgets and do various other things, too, along with campaigning. That's uh, that's right. Uh, so I am a commissioner. In fact, last week we finished our budget hearings. Um, I'm not sure if Jackson County has gone through that. And it's quite extensive. There is a shortfall because government uh, sees the taxpayer as the only source of revenue. Quite obviously, they are the only source of revenue. Every private business, every family, they're the only thing that keeps this whole boat running. And um, governments are keen on that and always looking for a levy, a library levy, or a tax, or a... um, Hey, we're doing that here. Are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. but library levies and extension services, I mean, you name it. Well, yeah, so it'll be public safety or library or, you know, school building bonds and whatnot. And there's always something out there for the public good. And that's why it's so paramount that we manage these resources with prudence. All right. Now, you can ask a question of Dennis here, 770-5633 at Dennis2014.com. And uh, I had it on my Facebook page last night. Someone had asked a question about, uh, Bill, how could I vote for someone whose campaign is in so much debt? And uh, she, I believe she was referring to an FEC filing that shows you got about $8,300 in campaign debt and about $8,400 in cash. You know, online here. What's the story? Right. Well, that that puts me a hundred dollars in the head. Right. So, you know, it's 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 actually just a simple cash flow problem. Mm -hmm. Money comes in. We spend it. Money comes in. We save it and make a sign by or whatever. We recently bought a couple of thousand signs. You'll see those springing up here in Jackson County. And quite frankly, it is difficult being a uh, challenging the incumbent. He's got the political machine. He's got lobbyists hanging off him. As I said in in one meeting, I said lobbyists are hanging off Greg Walden like maggots off a dead carcass. And um, it, uh, tell it, us what you really think there, Dennis. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that there are thousands of ways for a congressman to raise money, and there's very l- limited resources available to a man on the street, any citizen, average Joe citizen who's trying to make a run at this office. Okay, you've made it clear that it's really tough to challenge an incumbent. Then why are you doing this? Because because it needs to be done. Okay, Look, why it, does it need to be done? It needs to be done. I've got seventeen and a half trillion reasons why this needs to be done. Look at if you look at the path that our country is on, it's clearly unsustainable. Whether you think it's good or bad is not even on the p- table right here. I'm talking about sustainability. We know every man, woman, and child in America knows this isn't sustainable, and yet when I was at the Herald and News. Uh, round table in my town, Klamath Falls, they kept saying, but yeah, what are you going to do? And every time I say, well, we need to reduce spending and quit printing and audit the Fed, they would just shiver and they wouldn't want to face reality. So if you're going to live in the cloudy world of uh, make-believe, then you can live there. But I refuse. Now, to be fair here, Dennis, uh, it, it would appear that what you as and you term yourself a constitutional conservative, I'm kind of worried about you in in one respect for that, calling yourself constitutional conservative, yet you're running in a Republican primary. Why didn't you just say 
Republican running for congressman? Well, well, I am a Republican, and what I think is the Republican Party has lost its path. The Republican Party is no longer the uh, the Republicans that made America a great nation. They have fallen in bed with the Democrats. They're in favor of big government, big spending, big programs. And quite frankly, I think that's the problem that we need to fix. So I really have a Tea Party perspective, frugal administration of government policy, paying attention to those constitutional barriers to entry in the market. So how do you sell frugality to, and, and let's be honest, yeah. I know there is a uh, an image of the West. We think of the West as the... It's the Wild West, and you have the independent hard scrabble cowboy or the cattleman. Right, right. Here's the sheep herder, and this and that, and the other. I the, can picture the, that in my mind. You, you, <laughs> you know it, right? I mean, I'm smoking a Marlboro here. <laughs> Problem with this, though, is that we have an image of the West being independent, and we're trying to get control of these resources, but the reality has been it's owned, it's controlled, it's administered by the federal government. And the Western states, including Oregon, are uh, basically sitting around Washington, D.C., begging for handouts. And we do the begging for handouts through congressmen and senators. So how how do you sell that this isn't going to work? Well, it's unsustainable. And the the way to sell it is if we drive back to the Constitution, then what we what we recognize is in our legal system, all of the lands within our state jurisdictional boundary belong to the state. They do not belong to the federal government. And so what we should be doing is transferring and disposing of all those public lands and putting those public lands into state and private and county hands, the federal government should not be managing those lands and um, telling you and I that you're not allowed in the forest. So how do you accomplish that one in 425? Well, the, there's a big move here on all the western states. The 13 western states are more than 50 percent owned by the federal government. All of the eastern states um, are mostly uh, free and independent states in terms of federal land management. So that what we really need to do is push the transfer of the, the federal lands into private and state ownership. There's a movement by um, American Lands Council guru Ken Ivory, who was recently on, uh, uh, just last weekend actually, had a public lands meeting where 11 of the 13 states got together um, along with county commissioners as so I'm see, a county so commissioner. So you see this building then? It's you see building this as big all, time. And I imagine the Bundy Ranch uh, standoff, and now we're hearing about another ranch down in uh, right. Texas that is uh, dealing with similar sort of issues. Then you see this as a wave coming at the federal government. It, it is a wave, but here's the trick. The wave is coming from state legislatures up. What I'm suggesting is I want to be a congressman who's willing to open the hatch and let the guys through because if congress isn't willing to act then all of the blather from the states doesn't go anywhere we need men and women in congress at the federal level who recognize the truth and validity of this argument and are willing to cede those public lands all right and we have uh, dennis linthicum here greg had a question patriot act go right ahead with dennis hi bill hi dennis this is great research calling yeah great uh dennis i'd like to say that you you appear to have an excellent grasp of, of the current problems facing our country and Oregon and sp- uh, specifically. But I'd like to ask you a question, even though I think I might know the answer, uh, your answer, but I'd like to ask it anyway. And that is, your opponent, Greg Walden, voted to renew the Patriot Act. And in uh, our opinion, some of our opinions, uh, that, that Patriot Act is uh, completely unconstitutional. My question to you is what would you do if it uh, would come up again? You, you bet. And you're right. Greg Walden did support it. In fact, he defeated a um, a measure that would have eliminated funding of the mass surveillance and um, spying that the NSA is currently doing. He helped defeat legislation that would put your Fourth Amendments or help protect some of your Fourth Amendment rights. My county in Klamath, Klamath County commissioners passed a resolution where we um, we made claim that the NDAA specifically 
clearly sections 1021 and 1022 are unconstitutional. They violate your Fourth Amendment rights, and they should not be upheld by any constitutional sheriff in Oregon. And so we made that as a an item, and I would pursue, along with all of the other good Republicans in the House, there are 64 of them, to undo the NDAA as we see it today. All right. Thanks for the call, Greg. John's up here next. Dennis Linthicum, go right ahead. Hi, uh, Mr. Litsikon. Thanks for being here. Sure, go ahead. What's your question? Uh, um, I got a letter the other day from uh, from Congressman Walden's campaign, and it says that you took a trip to Las Vegas um, and used Klamath County uh, taxpayer funds to do that. Um, and I was just wanted to let you explain why. Uh, you, you bet that it's really dead easy. Uh, specifically, it was a it was a conference that was focusing on sustainable jobs. You'll know that Greg Walden didn't want to attend that or be part of that or be associated with it because one of the items was getting jobs back into rural America by getting government out of your pockets. It was a libertarian conference. I actually split the conference fifty fifty with Klamath County and myself. I attended numerous parts of that conference, which were directly related to keeping jobs, and then the other parts of it, which were against large, overbearing, and burdensome government. Greg Walden uh, apparently would rather I hadn't attended those sessions. All right. Thanks for the call. Brad's up here next. Want to make some good time here? Hello, Brad, with uh, Dennis Linthicum. Good morning, William. Good morning, sir. Question. Mr. Mr. Linthicum, uh, with, with Obama allowing the IRS to be the collection agency for Obamacare, uh, would you support or, or even encourage the abolishment of the IRS and going to a fair, a flat tax? You bet. I uh, Both the fair tax and the flat tax are good ideas. The flat tax is um, just an even Stephen tax on income. The fair tax is really on consumption, and I lean towards the consumption side. The real problem that we have in front of us, though, is that the federal government absorbs too much of our economy, is involved in every aspect of our lives, and is crushing private and small business, as well as being uh, instilling crony capitalism through its policies towards corporate enterprise. So I guess in, in a way you're saying the Internal Revenue Service is not the problem. It's just a symptom of the deeper issue. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, For I example, mean tax, tax Freedom Day is what, April 28th here well, in Oregon? And, and I would suggest Ooh. Tax Freedom Day is a scam because you'll continue to pay taxes all year long. Every time you uh, get a paycheck, they'll be taking taxes out. Mm. Every time you fill up at the gas station, they'll be taking taxes out. Every other state has a sales tax or a county sales tax or state sales tax tax day and plus the fed is printing money and inflating away your uh, savings which in is the worst of all taxes how do you sell that i mean you talk about end the fed and then people you know look at you oh it's one of those crazy ron paul people that's right yeah yeah the the idea that the federal government is just picking uh standards out of the air to tell you what your money is worth and they're inflating your dollars away at 2% a year is just a funny notion that has been propagated through our uh, scholastic and academic enterprise. Why in the world would you want to lose two cents out of every dollar every year for your entire life? And then tell me what happens to that dollar in 50 years? You know, it it disappears. Doesn't sound money gore a lot of oxes, though? I mean, you go to a sound money program, and I know this is it's kind of a pipe dream right now. There's no massive call for something like that right, right. now. I'm looking at your principles, though, that are uh, backing this up. You go to a sound money. I mean, the, the the government that we know and also the services that we know can't be funded under a sound money situation. Right. Here's what's interesting is we don't know what could be funded under a free and voluntary association. We don't know what could be funded under a smaller tax base with more prudent and effective management of those resources. Today, what you're seeing is capital cronyism. We're putting solar arrays all over Oregon. And if I were an investor, I would want a solar array in New Mexico, Arizona, on the California desert. Mm -hmm. I would not put a, a solar 
solar array in rainy Seattle and pretend that I was going to make investors money. The only way we can sell that, and it's a sales job, is to get the taxpayer and ratepayer to pay for higher electric rates. And as they're paying for higher electric rates, you and I, as the political elites in Washington, get to slap our friends on the back and say, hey, we did a good deal for you, didn't we? Mm. It's 8.50. Let's talk with uh, Bruce is up here next. Another campaign form letter. Let's hear it. Uh, yeah, I haven't listened to the whole thing. But anyway, but something that just gets into my fingernails. So I get a letter from, you know, Walden or whoever, and you know, and say, and all they do is sign their name on the letter. Okay. And it's just, it's just what, what? Know, my goat, you know. Okay, what's it say? Is there is there a specific question here, uh, Bruce? I'm sorry. No, would to appeal that, you know. Use your own stamps. You know, don't just sign your oh, name on it. Oh, the franking <laughs> privilege. Oh, okay. Oh, I got it. Okay. I, I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. you know, there's th- – this is this is the problem. The very first uh, form letter question or, or comment from Facebook was about my campaign finances. If I had the resources that were available, every time I show up at a Republican Central Committee, they say, we've got to be fair, two minutes for you, and then Greg Walden will be the keynote speaker for 30 minutes. And I'm thinking, what would be fair would be, give me the mic for 16 years and we'll even the playing field. And uh, and so there are all of these privileges that come with office and, frankly, are and you due would ha- the and office. You would, and you would have them, too. That's Were right, you Congressman. I don't. I don't think that all of a sudden you'd say, "Hey, I'm going to pay for all my, uh, you know, in district communication." Let's be honest about this. Tess. Well, well uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that th- it's not even appropriate at some level. What mm-hmm. I'm the question that I'm raising is the idea that we have of what's fair. Fair. It, this is why equity is a um, a libertarian notion that is recognized uh, to be in the value of you as a human being and not in the monetary value you bring to the table. It's equity does not come uh, through legislation. Equity comes in the marketplace of ideas and um, and is part of a much broader perspective of how you relate to people, how you communicate ideas, and how you allow those ideas to uh, proffer in the um, in the public sphere. What practically do you bring, or what of practical gain for the Rogue Valley do you would you bring as a congressman? Because a lot of times candidacies get sold. Hey, this is what I can get for you. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. And I, quite frankly, I struggle with that because I'm not looking for specific things to gain for individuals in District 2 except for liberty and freedom. If liberty isn't a big enough calling card, if you don't want free access to your forest, if you don't want control of your own life, if you don't want control of your own money, then I'm not your guy. But if you're dying for more freedom, if you're dying for uh, your individual liberty, Liberty, your own economic resources to be allotted to you, earned by you, kept by you, and spent by you, then I'm the man you want to chase. Final question I would ask then, uh, Congressman Walton, along with Schrader and various other Congress uh, critters, ended up putting together what appears to be a, a pretty reasonable force compromise bill. Would you have signed something like that? How would you have done it differently? I, I would have argued for it differently in its entirety. Look at it gives it takes fifty percent of the ONC forest. Uh, it's the ONC uh, forest bill that you're referring to, uh, HB fifteen twenty six. It takes fifty percent of that land and removes it from management. You and I both know that when you move a landscape from management, you create astronomical fire hazard. Um, the fire suppression. But that's costs. kind of the gangrene price of getting anything done right now with gangrene's uh, control of the state lever of powers. I think we need to articulate the arguments. Look at the U.S. Federal Forest Service lost 9.2 million acres to forest fire. And this is in an attempt to save forest land. They only harvested 0.2. This is an upside-down policy. We're devastating our natural resources. We're destroying animal habitat. We're destroying the watershed, all in the name of being ecologically sound. This story's upside-down. All right, Dennis2014.com. Dennis, pleasure having you on. Thanks for dropping in. You bet. Thank all you, right. Bill. We're, it's well, always a pleasure. Where are you off to next, by the way? Uh, this morning, we're headed out to um, Sensational Suites in Eagle Point. Okay. Oh, with Colleen. Yes, yes. All right, so you're going to be out there. What time? 
uh, as soon as I get there. Maybe we need cannoli. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Thanks, Dennis. Okay.